Dr. Perriman, back here. I can't see you, but I don't I'll, see you. I'll stand you. up. You didn't speak of, of anything about um, school choice. Uh -huh. I know that's a big topic tech here locally, and I just thought I wanted to hear your thoughts on how that might impact the economy. Did I do something to make you mad? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you guys know if you ask me a question, I'm going to answer it. I'm going to tell you what I think. School choice, obviously a very controversial topic, and I'll be happy to talk about it right now. Uh, and, 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 uh, what we, are, what we are proposing in Texas right now is not a good school choice system. There is such a thing as a good school choice system. Oh, okay, you applaud. Rest of you can boo, whatever, go ahead. Happy. One, two, three, applaud, one, two, three, boo, whatever. <laughs> but, but, but basically how I, and, and school, there, there's nothing new about this. A lot of people don't realize this. In fact, I, I went to bed with this the other day. In the, the sort of the book that kind of defined capitalism the way we think about it years and years ago was The Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith, which was written in 1776. He talked about vouchers in there. Okay, this is not a new topic. Okay, he talked about a lot of other stuff too. He went over 200 pages about a pen factory, but he talked about vouchers. Okay, um, the way it can work is if you have an excellent, well funded system where everybody can get a, a, a great education, and then you layer on top of that. A system that says, okay, we'll, we'll give each student some money, to, like if you want to specialize in something, and encourage schools to be innovative and specialize in one thing or another, and create really great programs on top of an excellent program. Vouchers work very, very well for that, okay? That's not what we have in Texas. We have a school system, we have a challenging demographic in our school system to start with. Um, and I've gone through some of this, I think, in the past years, but let me just, I, I won't go through the whole thing. But um, at this moment, roughly 54% of the kids enrolled in our schools are Hispanic. That is great, and that is wonderful, because that's the source of all that growth in the workforce I was talking about. Uh, but we, did, we ran the numbers, and the households those kids come from, those 54% of the kids, have 5% of the household wealth of, school, of parents of school kids in Texas. So you've got over half the kids and 5% of the money. That means they don't get summer enrichment programs. They don't get tutors. They don't get software or even possibly a computer. They don't get broadband access very easily. It's a challenging group to try to educate. 20% of them come into school with, uh, with uh, a language barrier. Our black community in Texas is not growing or declining. The Hispanic growing is going to be, that's going to be 65% before you know it. The black population in Texas is very, very steady. It stays about the same all the time, okay? About 12% of our kids, are in school are, are, are black kids, those households, 1.6% of money. You put those together, you got two thirds of the kids and 8% of the money. Okay? Let's talk about the Anglos for a minute. The demographics of Texas is Hispanics are going up, blacks are stable, Asians are going up very rapidly, Asians and others from a small base, and Anglos are going down. I mean, that, that is our demographic in Texas. There's 125,000 fewer Anglo kids in school now than there were 10 years ago but there's 55,000 more of them that are economically disadvantaged. So what I'm saying is we have a tough population to educate. One out of every, one out of every 50 kids in our, in our public schools in Texas, that's basically one kid in every two classrooms, is homeless. Okay, I mean, we, we have a tough situation to educate. We are funding public schools. We rank somewhere 40th, depending on which measure, somewhere between 38th and 43rd in school funding, depending on which measure you use. So we're, we're not putting in the resources we need to. What the voucher systems we are talking about do is they'll say, okay, we're going to give parents, and one was 5,000, one was 8,000, pick a number, it doesn't matter. Let's, we'll say 5,000, that makes the math a little easier. Let's say a good private school education costs $25,000 a year right now. I don't know what that's ballpark, I think. Um, people who afford $25,000 a year get that for each one of their kids. What this system would do is it would make it for people who can afford $20,000 a year. You get that for the kids. That would help their kids probably, but it's going to make it even more challenging to have this population that we're relying on to try to educate here is going to become even more challenging at that point. It's not going to help those who are in the most need there. So again, you can design a system if you have the right system to start with. The primary thing we need to do in Texas right now, and I tell people this all the time, if I look at the future of this state, somebody, I get a question sometimes, what keep me up at night? Um, Economic development is going to depend on workers. 
We have many, many fewer people in the United States that are young than we had 10 years ago. Over a million fewer young people. We have over 440,000 more young people in Texas. If we educate those kids, there's absolutely nothing that can stop this state from growing like a house of fire. If we don't educate those kids, there's absolutely nothing we can do to make our state grow. In fact, we did a thing that said if we don't improve the school system, things stay just like they are, and we just let demographics kind of take their turn, that just literally in 10 years, the average person in Texas would be, in today's job be making $6,000 less than they are now. That gives you a state with high needs and low growth. We don't have a great workforce to attract people. We've got all kinds of uh, social issues we have to deal with, and we're not dealing with the ones we have now adequately. So it is literally the single most important thing we'll do is educate these kids. And as they're structured right now, these, the voucher proposals are not moving us in the right direction to accomplish that. Okay? So, so that would be my response on that, again. I, mean, I accept any applause or any booze you want to give me. 